My name is Ina Langerman. I'm a violinist in New York City, and I'm a violin teacher. Today, we're going to learn spiccato, and I'm going to give you six progressive exercises. The first two exercises are based on different bow strokes, but they're going to help you develop a good, a good grip, and it's going to be focused on flexibility and strong, but yet very relaxed fingers. The first exercise is uh, actually the ricochet. We're gonna do a ricochet on uh, somewhere in the middle of the bow. And the reason we are doing this, the reason we are doing this is to feel how soft and relaxed my thumb feels when I let the bow bounce. I almost feel like I'm not holding the bow at all. It feels very, very loose. If I just relax the bow, I can even lift my fingers off. And my thumb is very supportive. It's so supportive of the bow that my other fingers can go up and down like this. So very important is to keep your thumb bent. So it's bent, but not, uh, not tense. So let's do it a few times. So you want to get that really relaxed bow hand. Okay, so the second exercise, also preliminary, based on a different bow stroke, it's the collet bow stroke, where you grab the string firmly with the bow hair and use your fingers to move the bow out of the string like a little bite. So you want to make sure that the bow can push and pull on the string without moving. So that's how, that's how you know you got a good grip. And then, so if we're doing an up bow, it's gonna, the fingers, look at my fingers. It's like I am grabbing something. So the up bow starts like this and then they end like this. And the down bows will be opposite. They'll start with my fingers like this and like dropping something. So I'll show you a down bow. So if I'm gonna do a down bow, first I wanna grab the string, have my fingers nice and curved and pretend I'm dropping something. So no, notice that my arm isn't moving when I'm doing this. So I'll do a couple up and down strokes for collet. I'll try it in a different part of the bow. I'll try it near the frog. So you grab the string, so I'll do an up bow and I'll do a down bow. And let's try a different part of the bow. So try it now in the middle. It's gonna feel a little different. So I'll do a down bow first, so fingers nice and round. Let's do an up bow. Like picking something up. Okay, so this is something you can practice first. So let's go on to exercise number three. So now we're gonna get started with spiccato. First, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a simple detaché bow stroke, but we're gonna do it in the air just above the open string. So I'll, I'll do A string. Um, so I'm gonna do it right by the frog. Just a simple detaché, one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna let my bow just touch down on the way down, so it's gonna turn into a little arc shape. and I'm touching down. I'll do the same thing now, but this time, instead of having my bow hair tilted, I'm gonna make my bow hair flat and listen to how different it's gonna sound. It sounds different. It sounds shorter. And if I do it with my bow hair tilted, Sounds more brushy. Like if you have a paintbrush, pretend like you're painting on a canvas. And you can decide how you use a paintbrush. You can make small dots with your paintbrush or you can make brushy strokes across the canvas. So it's very similar. You can imagine you're painting. Now I'm gonna do it in a different part of the bow and I'm gonna go a little faster. So a little bit higher. hair okay now in the middle so 
So I'm moving the bow up a little bit more. I'm gonna go faster again. So first the bow here tilted. Now with bow here flat. So notice that when my bow here is tilted, we create that brush stroke. And when it's flatter, it sounds more almost percussive. Okay, so moving on to the next exercise, very similar to this one, but this time we're gonna actually alternate between the spiccato, which we just did, and the regular detaché. So we're going to begin back at the frog. We'll do a couple detaché right on the string. So you wanna make it really nice and smooth. And then we're gonna bounce off. So let's alternate between them. And before you go back to the detaché, you want to make sure that you put the bow back down before you restart the detaché. Because you don't want to start, you never want to start detaché from above the string because otherwise you're going to get, you're going to get like a bad landing, like a airplane landing poorly. <laughs> if you ever experienced that, it's not fun. Okay. Now move up, different part of the bow, so we'll go a little faster. Place. Okay, let's move down to the middle, a little faster. A little faster, same spot. As you go quicker, alternating like this, it becomes trickier going back to the detaché. So one thing that can help is the very last spiccato note. When it gets fast enough, the very last spiccato note you can leave on the string. So... Okay, so play it around, uh, play around with this um, at different tempos. Uh, so you can, you can use a metronome to help you. Um, so when you're at the frog, you can do 60 and do eighth notes, then moving up, uh, you can do like 72, and then moving up, you can do like 84. I'm counting by 12, just to be systematic about it. Okay, the next one is, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna add the left hand for the next one. This is coordination. So when we start adding notes, we have a new problem, is coordinating with the left hand. So, we'll use Shradik's first exercise. Okay, and so on. You can use this one, for example, to practice coordination. I'll still start with plain slurred. You can do it also with any passage in a piece that you're learning, which has spiccato. So, I r really recommend starting with slurring the notes to check if your left hand is actually even. So. Okay, so once it's evened out, you can start adding the notes separately with the spiccato and what you're gonna do is you'll play each note four times. can do each note three times then we'll do each note two times uh, to make it extra extra challenge for you do it two times but starting up bow it's always tricky starting it up bow and then as written So now, finally, exercise number six, string crossings. So when you're doing spiccato and you have to cross strings in the middle of the passage, we have to remember one thing. You have to actually change the string a little bit sooner than you think. 
we'll use Kreitzer number eight, for example, the very beginning. Okay, so the way to coordinate the string changes, keep in mind that you have to change the string actually at the very end of the last note that's on the previous string. So if we dissect these notes, we have two notes on the D string, one note on the A string, then you have five notes on the E string, so, so and so on. So what you wanna do is for the first two notes, I'm gonna change my string at the end of the second note, so it's an up bow. Then I do a bow stop to check to make sure I did it correctly. Then I have one note on the A string, so at the end I go down to the E string really quick. So let's put these together. We do it better. No. So notice how my elbow is always moving a little bit ahead. Uh, sometimes, depending on what the pattern is, you'll be using just the fingers or just the hand, depending on what the string crossing pattern is in the piece. So another great way to practice it is to take out the left hand because sometimes it can get in the way. And it's also a little tricky to practice it without the left hand because it makes you really focus on only the string changes and it really really makes you think so let's see we had two notes on d one note on a five three two and if it gets really confusing you can tap the fingers here and that way you can really you're listening more to whether or not the string crossing is even and not worrying about things like intonation, you know. Okay, and then we can add it back in. Okay. So, good. Those are the six exercises. So now I'll just give you a few tips for um, practicing, no matter which step you're on. And by the way, the first tip is don't try to do everything at once. Okay, it's very, very important. It's, e it's easy to get really excited and try to get everything at once. You know, don't, don't be impatient. Um, it's very easy to be impatient or get frustrated learning a very difficult bow stroke like spiccato. It's a very advanced bow stroke. Okay, so number one, be patient. Different concepts of spiccato can take it takes several weeks to figure out. Other concepts can take months to figure out, while more advanced concepts can take years to really feel comfortable doing. So it's important to be patient and most important to be consistent. Approach the process with curiosity, you know, and also experimentation. It's very helpful to experiment because spiccato has several elements. You know, we have the element of bow length, we have the element of bow height, and also the element of what part of the bow you're at. And all of those factors, different combinations of those, will affect what the sound is. Oh, and also, let's not forget from the beginning, the bow tilt, how much bow you're using, the bow tilt also affects the sound. Well, and if, you know, if you want to get really crazy about it, you know, there's also the sounding point. You know, it's like a fruit smoothie, depending on what you put in it, it's going to create something different. So you want to experiment. Experimenting is very um, crucial in this. And also remember that your bow is unique. Your arm is unique. Your bow holds unique to you. You want to play around with how your arm moves, how, where your elbow is. If we use flatter bow hair, we get more height in the bounce, whereas if you use more length and less bow hair. If you have more tilt, you'll get the brushy bow stroke. If you're playing closer to the frog, it's gonna be slower. And usually when you go towards the middle, you can make a quicker spiccato. 
All right, so tip number two. Um, be mindful of how much rosin is on your bow. This is something we don't think about a lot, but depending on what kind of rosin you use or how much you put on can actually uh, affect um, your production of spiccato. I mean, I know from experience if there's not enough rosin, I feel like I need to give extra effort to make spiccato happen. Or if there's too much rosin, it might sound extra dry. Okay, so it's just something to keep in mind, just something to observe, you know. Okay, and finally, the third tip I have for you, this is more when you are applying spiccato to a specific piece. And of course, you know, we like, if you have like a fast passage in a piece, it's uh, smart to practice it slowly. However, if you're practicing a spiccato passage under tempo, be careful that you don't su suddenly start to use more bow than you normally would when you're at tempo. Because when you're at tempo, you have to keep in mind, you probably won't, if it's a fast passage, you probably won't use a lot of bow, or you'll be in a certain part of the bow depending on what piece you are playing. So when you're practicing it slowly, even if you're practicing it on the string, just to get the notes, don't suddenly start you know, using a whole bow because then suddenly you're practicing a different piece, okay? And it might actually save you time to right away practice in the right part of the bow that you'll ultimately play later when you put it together at tempo. All right, uh, I'm sure there are many, many more ways to learn spiccato and there are many approaches to it. If I didn't mention a certain exercise that works for you that you really like to do i'm interested put it in the comments below and i hope this has been helpful to you as always enjoy the process and i will see you in the next video